Panelist Podcast, Kyle here with Dimitri and Pierre. We just left Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, part one. Spoilers in three, two, one. Like we always do, let's start this off. Out of ten, what do you rate this movie? Six. Okay. Ever since Guardians, honestly, it's hard for me to rate these movies and give them as great of a rating as I used to. So I have to be wowed. A 9.5 out of 10. I give it an even 10, although I had some discrepancies with too much of certain characters. If you have discrepancies, then how is it a 10? I didn't want so much of certain characters, and they kept talking <sighs> about their emotions. Can I change my rating? We know it's a 10. It was a 10. It was so good. It was possibly it was better so- than the first one. First one, I feel like they held back on stuff you know like they weren't sure how the audience would react and now that the first one was like wow this is a great movie they're like all right well if you like that this is what we actually were gonna do and 120.5 million opening weekend for an animated movie where spider-man the main character is not peter parker like that is just such a cool sentence to say it's like it came out of nowhere and now all of a sudden it's just like he's everywhere and everyone loves him my opinion the video game was the final straw to fully put him into a household name i think before that it still was us that knew and cared and that's when the prices really hiked up although all the prices of modern books kind of went off around then because the pandy and all but i think that was like the last push And now we have this. And with this, of course, we have Sony announcing that they're working on live action. And of course, as you said a thousand times, spoilers, but we have Donald Glover appearing in this movie as the only non-animated character reprising his role as Prowler, actually in some kind of Prowler outfit, which just further confirms that everything is connected. And everyone should go to Heritage Auction House and look up the 9.8 variant and make their bid. It is signed and sketched by Mark Bagley and Clayton Crane. It is currently in the 5,000s, but don't be shy. You want to get your bids in now. (laughs) You want to get them in soon because some of us are losing sleep. Yeah, I think Sony is really just honing in on their Spider-Verse. Yeah, I think you're right. There's a reason we didn't see Tom Holland. They don't want to pay him and they don't want to pay Disney anything because they got some weird contract that we'll never understand. But they own Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man and they own Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. So what did we see? We saw both of them. What do they own? Prowler. So what did we see? Donald Glover as Prowler. Miles live action could be in one of those universes. He could just be in Venom's universe. He could be in Morbius's universe. Craven. So yeah, Venom, the convenience store lady, whatever her name is, she Mm -hmm. makes an appearance. That conversation was... And I think what we're going to see is they're going to take Andrew Garfield, make him the Sony Spider-Man, and I think they're going to kill Andrew Garfield in the same movie that brings in Miles. I think that's going to be your ultimate fallout. I mean, we've said this before in the past, but yeah, it's more and more possible now. I think Dimitri actually had that original idea to kill I think it just makes the most sense in terms of all the Spider-Men. Like, he's the one that needs his final chapter closed. Have a great movie out of him. Kill him off. Have Miles continue it from there. And he'll eventually meet up with Tom Holland. I think that'll eventually become like... Yeah, I mean, the only reason I would say that theory could now only recently be thrown away is because of the Portuguese subtitles saying Miles in the background of No Way Home, possibly confirming that Miles at some point in his life exists not only in the MCU, outside of the fact that Donald Glover dropped having a nephew in Homecoming, but it confirms that he might even be in the same apartment building as Peter Parker. I could be wrong. Here's just a working theory. But what if Miles never makes it back to his universe? And he just crosses into MCU or Sony live action universe. I don't know if they would just because it's such a big franchise now as an animated that it would almost take away from it. It would benefit them to retell the story differently because this drastically has pulled away from the comics. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's its own thing, which is crazy that it's this good. The fact that we saw everyone from Toby to Andrew to Donald Glover to every Spider-Man suit and variation you could possibly imagine they literally could do anything like there's no way we could argue and say oh they'll never do that like we really don't know at this point i also would like to see like this next movie since they've done this with all the original actors i would like to see gwen stacy emma stone oh live in the third movie yeah like just pop in like real quick i did like that they didn't try and call her ghost spider did you notice that right yeah so spider gwen is really spider woman and then when they started using her a lot more than they originally intended they didn't want to keep calling her spider woman because as you saw jessica drew is spider woman so they Mm -hmm. changed her to ghost spider Mm. it was not very popular like that one time they tried to call Miles Kid Arachnid. Kid Arachnid. She doesn't go by Spider-Gwen? 
No, that would give away her secret identity. It is weird. Why did they start it that way? I don't. Like, what were they thinking? I don't know. For everyone to understand who it was and not just think it was a random blonde. Because Gwen Stacy was not in the comics for X amount of years and she died. All right. So let's go over just some general things we liked. Things that we noticed different or more so from the original movie. But before we do that, is Across the Spider-Verse better than Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? I know it's hard to give a movie a 10 and then not even a few weeks later give another movie a 10. Are they very different? Obviously. But still, is it better? I would say yes for different reasons. It ended, right? So mm-hmm. it's completed a story. This is furthering another story. Totally different. I definitely would say bigger, right? That's fair. And it's doing it its own separate way. I mean, I know they didn't bit part one, but I think it could have easily just been its own movie. In and a just ended of movies. Yeah. on a cliffhanger more so. Yeah, no, I think it's the, probably the best anime movie in a while. If you're comparing it to Guardians of the Galaxy, I think it's phenomenal in every aspect and story, timing. It was funny. Is also emotional, and I mm. think the music was actually really amazing too. Yeah. Like all the soundtracks that were made for this, expanding on kind of the music that they've done, even with the first one, they capture that with Miles too. So, next question: Do you think Across the Spider Verse is the best Spider-Man movie of all time? I mean, let's answer that first. Do we think it's better than the first one? I do. I think so. Just I think so because they pushed, like you were saying, they didn't hold anything back. The first one's a classic, but this didn't hold anything back. I think this is the best Spider-Man movie ever. For me, I think it would be between this and Far From Home. No. With the three Peter Parkers. <laughs> no Way Home. Okay. No Way Home. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, Far From Home was when he was in Paris. Yeah, I didn't love that one, personally. No. That's that's on the bottom. No. I mean, <laughs> uh, no, you know what? Mysterio was really well done in that. But yeah. yeah, no, I think No Way Home and this have to be the top Spider-Man movies ever. Now, are we blinded by nostalgia for both of those answers? Because No Way Home, obvious nostalgia. This, you couldn't not have nostalgia at some point, no matter what age you were, because they had every animated show. I want to even check to see if the original voice actors were there, you know? Like, that might even be a thing. Every suit that's ever showed up in any comic ever, they're both nostalgia bait. Is it still the best? I still think it's the best. Yeah, I like it because it gives you a lot. You get your villains, you get... It might be nostalgia based. (laughs) I mean, even if you took that away... I guess you couldn't take it away, honestly. The storyline's still good, though. Like, using Spider-Man 2099, I like the fact that they actually made reference to how the comic book characters, I guess, whether it be a misconception on what people hated about the characters or just, like, their general attitude in the comics, they poked fun at. For example, Scarlet Spider, him being the clone of Peter Parker and him always having a general, like, more dramatic tone than the original Peter Parker, I think they captivated that and poked fun and made him kind of the comedic relief whenever yeah. he was posing or doing anything 2099 also if you read his comic book very serious under 10 peter parker even pokes phone and was like why are you so serious like right. that's just how he is in his comics is they're not funny they're very dry hobby love them Love him even more. Now, he was great. I want to shout out Cody because I think he did such a great job with his book. And now actually putting a voice to this character, I almost want to go back and reread his run because that's generally what I felt from the character. But just having like an actual voice in your head now and, yeah. and reading it with that voice makes it that much better. He was good, even though he was trying to steal Gwen from Miles. And they even pulled newer Spider-Verse characters in like the last year of spider the t-rex right the t-rex the western spider-man whatever the fuck his mm. name is and there were a few other ones that were definitely web like slinger. from the last web slinger there were definitely a few that were from like the last recent years of spider-verse which is very very cool they're pulling from very recent comics i think generally the art was on a whole new level oh yeah of abstract and emotion based and the last one was more this is the art style this is the vibe this depending not only on the character but the character's mood the scene i mean everything like at one point when gwen which i think she did a little too much one little complaint a little bit too much emotions i could have scaled back some of that and maybe give her a spinoff about her whole world there's a lot of her talking and being upset i would have liked half of that and then that half to be in her own movie anyway at one point when she's expressing herself the walls are literally dripping it's like mm-hmm. the paint and like the whole background's running kind of like showing like that whole moment and everything behind is a blur i agree but... but i think that's also the art style of the comic i also like overall like the beginning just all of her stuff i thought was done really well the fact that vulture was her villain 
and mm-hmm. that's her first villain in her first run. I love that. I will say, though, just on the fact of names that were mentioned, I don't know if the name was mentioned, but Robbie did make an Instagram post, which I won't read, but he wasn't too pleased with the lack of credit towards Spider-Gwen. He has deleted that post. I'll say I agree, and it's definitely a problem that all of these movies have. Just because they didn't write the original character, or they didn't own the rights to the character, whether they made it from scratch or they just put a different suit on it, or it's an alternate version. I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, that Spider-Gwen costume, insane looking. Now I'm hoping he gets a suit when they go live action. In his sketchbook, when he was talking about making the costume, it showed a more classic Miles suit. Another cool thing was editor notes. That was a nice touch they didn't really do before. That's something animated can do that live action couldn't pull off the same. I wish they did more of that. Pierre's favorite world was Lego Spider-Man world. They could have stayed there a little bit more. I'm surprised they went back to it at all. I liked it. I liked the amount of it. It was just like a, there you go. That's it. Why are you going so fast? Give me a little bit more of that. Come on. That's a whole other spinoff. Give me me what you got. What are you doing? A video game there? Let me know. Let me know what you're doing. Did you notice Genki playing Spider-Man on his PS5? No, that's crazy. Every time they showed Genki, it was Spider-Man. You could see like the white emblem too and everything on the ps5 and of course the ps5 is a sony movie right that's funny i didn't yeah. even notice the ps5 i don't know if i'm the only one here mm-hmm. but i have a problem with every other Genki being thin yeah i don't know why that's the one other thing where it's like when we get the live action let's be closer to the comic where he's not jumping universes in his first week as spider-man don't get yeah. me wrong no this is untouchable ground him a little yeah for the live action this is his own thing like yeah, entirely. but is he grounded really in the comics? Because from the runs that he's been on so far, he's been all over the fucking place. So I'll tell you this. He was. Yeah. And then his popularity started to grow. And he wasn't because then they started throwing him every single book you could think of. And they had him like kill Captain America, even though he didn't. And then he got this new run, the first writer to ever touch him besides Bendis. And he had clones and he had different realities and he got a sister and on and on and on. And now the current run is once again grounded under Cody. Although he has an electric sword now, so that's kind of cool. Kind of like that. But he is now again grounded as far as his main book goes. If he's popping up other places doing some crazy crap, uh, I can't tell you. I like the fact that he has more powers than your other spider-man i guess not that he has more powers no he's got more because he has everything plus electric and invisibility because really what spider-man have besides sticky body parts super strength and the spider sense of course very lonely so let's jump right to that actually the loneliness right they kept saying canon events over and over canon event canon event yeah it didn't click in my head as quick as it should have but that's like the most meta name for something they could have done is just turn around and be like it's a canon event. Like, it's canon to the story. It has to happen. Otherwise, the story's not what it's supposed to be. That was a really nice touch. Well, they even mentioned it was like the first fight with Vulture. He pulled like a wing out of thin air. He mentioned something. and It gave us an editor note of what it meant. It was, it was like hammer. Uh, hammer space. Hammer space. And it literally was like a space where something that's too large to fit can magically come out of. Yeah. I want more of that yeah. too later on in the movie. Like, stop showing off. And then not like giving us more of it. As you mentioned before, we had Venom kind of confirmed his universe, but there was also quite a bit black suit action. So it's also kind of saying that there's Venom places. We saw some Venom covers in the web of despair, I'll call it, right? Where they showed all the shitty things that happens to Spider-Man. <laughs> um, there was yeah. a few Venoms floating around there. Some real comic covers mixed in with some made for the movie. I know you mentioned the chapters, the way it jumped with comic covers. You like that? That kind of ties to the first one, but like it wasn't just the intros now. It was actually the pacing of the movie. So that was nice. 2099, though. I believe that he's a vampire. No, 2099 was called a vampire (laughs) one too many times. And I was like, no, it's just the DNA thing, right? From the comics. But apparently he injected himself with something. I think it's a mystery for the next part. He's going to have more secrets than they know. He also, if you saw... I caught this one. I'm proud of catching this one. I don't know if you remember when he got his more current run. I think it was a few years ago now. He had a white suit. The white suit was being built in the background in one of the scenes where he was just yelling at somebody. Oh. So that's kind of cool. So you know he's going to wear the white suit in the next movie when he comes back with vengeance, you know. Or maybe not. Maybe it was just another Easter egg. Did everyone enjoy the character Cyborg Spider-Woman? I truly enjoyed the character. And I'm sure that the people that spent $60 
on her action figure also loved the character in this movie because out of all of the toys we got when you get a toy that's bigger than the rest and 60 dollars, you would think that the character had more than 3.5 seconds of screen time jesus christ and i would have given i don't know another one an action figure like spider bite that should have got an action figure over cyborg spider Woman. you go man cyborg spider woman was just put in to get people talking about it and make their own assumptions because that was the talk everyone's like what that was the only figure that people cared about that's true everything else was just a normal like all right they look cool but now i'm just like let's get a wave of characters that we now know are more relevant to the story I would really like a wave of figures from this movie. Even the characters that didn't have a huge appearance, like Cyborg by Woman. But no, honestly, like the models, like the sculpts for these figures, oh, yeah. even the packaging, and then like the molds are just so unique to I think it's the a movie. clamshell. I think it's what that packaging is called. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. Right. But yeah, there's like the sculpts, the general molds for that. It's just, it's a little bit more, I don't know, animated compared to your other figures, no. but still yeah. very well put together. So how do we feel about Spot as the villain, you know, outside of 2099 being the real villain? I like the idea of how it's a James Gunn mindset where you take a character that doesn't really mean a lot, Mm -hmm. that no one really cares about, and make it into this huge villain that I think steals the spotlight. I think it was very well put together and and almost menacing. Oh, Spotlight. Oh, my God. I always do this. Yeah, Dimitri, did you like the white man with holes? No, I thought it was perfect. I think that's a villain in Bendis' last run. He uses that villain. I honestly don't remember. Very subtly, though. I think there's a cover with him on it. Someone talked about it, why they chose Spot as the villain. And it had to do with the fact of something people didn't really expect. So we talk about that a lot on this podcast, about how they have source material and why don't they pull from the comics. and blah, blah, blah. For this particular situation... I love the fact that they really just created a whole thing with Spot Mm. versus, you know, just taking one of his main villains and just taking it page for page. Right. They gave him a whole backstory. He's actually the guy that got hit in the head with the bagel in the first movie. Yeah. You know, they didn't plan that. And then we're like, oh, let's grab someone from that. Oh, they have the bagel to hit his head. Like, perfect. Yeah. Reminds me of how they were pulling everyone for, I guess, the MCU and saying that they hated Tony Stark. Like, someone from Tony Stark's past. Even, like, Furio. You never saw him in the past, but now, all of a sudden, he was someone that... Oh, yeah. So, let's go super spoily for a second and go directly to the end. So... Miles ends up in not his universe, but a universe where the spider was supposed to bite Peter Parker, but got sent to Miles before it did. And in that universe, Miles, instead of Aaron, is Prowler. I'll give my opinion quick, as I have read technically more than all of you on this. Miles has an evil version in the comics. That evil version is from 616. Inevitably, that evil Miles from 616 universe becomes a character known as Ultimatum, who is responsible for a lot of bad crap that happens to Miles. This route, I'm okay with. I just feel like they could have grabbed the name. They didn't need to call him Prowler or just have him be the evil one. I wish they went that way. That would have been perfect. It could have been perfectly done. It's such a thing to connect it where there's other Miles out there, just like there's other Peter Parkers. It's just most of the Peter Parkers are Spider-Man and only one of the Miles actually becomes Spider-Man. So the fact that like the one in our Peter Parker's universe is an evil asshole. Generally, I'm going to go against what you guys are saying about using okay. Ultimatum, mm-hmm. not knowing really much about Ultimatum, but I mm-hmm. think I that, they, sure can that. Always, they can always use Ultimatum later on in a separate universe or even live action or just no, make that fair. the end credit scene of this next movie. You know, okay, they repaired everything and then just kidding. There's another alternate universe, Miles Morales, that wants to fuck all shit up. Like he keeps a watch at the end or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I think this Miles, this evil miles i mm-hmm. think he isn't evil because like why is he so mad at this miles like why is he like treating him like shit like oh you want to go save your dad why do i care his anger is just misplaced and i think the second movie is gonna show miles i guess alternate universe miles what he could be and that he didn't have to take a bad path so right. I think it'll be like a prowler that helps out Miles. Which is definitely interesting. We got that at the end of this movie. After so much that happened and so much set up for the sequel, it is surprising that we got yet another villain. Now there's technically three villains. Like I said, I think next movie is going to be him turning around and when he goes back to his universe, he'll be like a good prowler. Same thing even with 2099. 
I think they're going to realize, what were they calling him? So they called Miles the anomaly that started all of the other anomalies. Because he got bit yeah. by a spider from a universe that wasn't even his, disrupting that universe and his own universe, causing Peter to die in his, causing the other universe to literally go to hell. So, yeah, no, I think you're right. I think that 2099 will realize. Well, I mean, he did realize, right? 2099 noted that he also was anomaly. He went to a world he wasn't supposed to and tried to take on a life, thinking he could fill in the blanks and ended up destroying that universe, right? And they even referenced to Peter B. Parker, kind of hinting that maybe like he kind of knew about it more so. Like maybe it was his universe even that he got disrupted, which means he would go to a different universe and find a different Mary Jane and impregnate her, not the one that he actually was in love with. So that's an interesting plot if that's at all the same, but we'll skip over that. But yeah, I do think 29 will flip and help Miles defeat Spot. And that'll be the ending, of course, with Prowler as well. I don't think the third movie is going to be as good. It's going to be hard. Yeah. I mean, early prediction, <laughs> I don't see how it it'll be good, hold. but yeah, this is going to be the best one out of the three. Right. Well, it's kind of like an Infinity War endgame kind of situation. When you yeah. do something so damning in a story, you're going to get to a point where it's like, well, how the hell do I get him out of this situation? Like the situation's crazy over the top and the most entertaining, creative thing you've ever seen. But sometimes you really don't even know how to get them out of the thing that you did. And I think that's the possibility of the next one not being so good. That'll be it. We're going to be underwhelmed with the solution to these, what, several issues that are now arose at the end of the movie. I disagree. I think they got it. What they've done with this sequel, they got it. It's going to live up to what we want. Well, I would say to agree with you, too, aren't we expecting this next year? Yeah. So if that's the case, then they worked on it almost seamlessly and found the part to cut it in half so does anything else come out in between like are we getting uh craven does that come out before next year yeah what i would like to see something from this bleeding into that very subtly very like Mm. minute almost feels like nothing just you know because they're doing the whole uh, multiverse shit it just makes sense right now last thing before we go into easter eggs I made a TikTok months and months ago now after the Hypno Hustler Donald Glover movie announcement. Can we just again agree that that's bullshit and it's going to be a Prowler movie and it could possibly be the introduction of Miles or maybe it is just a Prowler movie and it is just that and this Portuguese subtitles that are claiming Miles is in the same apartment building as Peter, uh, Tom Holland Peter that is, maybe that's the introduction and then from there we get the spinoff of a Prowler movie, because I can't see him doing what he did in this again as the only real person in an animated movie to then go and do a Hypno Hustler title under Sony. I think you're right, because what else would he be doing? And maybe that was the problem. They were worried about this scene getting leaked, and that's why they scrambled and came up with this. I think this is perfect to go along with what you're talking about. It's also perfect if they leave it alone, which I would hate. Let's say they do. Let's say this is the last time we see Donald Glover. I really hope not. But it would still be good enough that they are acknowledging that the fans have wanted that for so long. They at least gave us a nod, the same as they gave Jim from The Office Fantastic Four outfit. Although I want him in a full out movie like that. At least they gave us that. So they pushed back the Spider-Man movie with Tom Holland. Oh, yeah, because of the writer's strike. Then they pushed it further back. They're like, oh, we're delaying this movie. So would you want to see this Miles become live action? Or do you voice actor himself? No, 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 no. I'm saying this Miles with this background, knowing this is his history, become the live action Miles. Or do you want a different Miles? No, I think I want a different one because there's so much story. They can literally redo his origin more comic accurate and the story would be so drastically different and still so great because that source material is still so great. It's so bizarre to me that they managed to make a brand new origin story that in some cases is drastically different. And it's arguably better than the original. Now, yeah. let's give the original a shot grounded in live action. I actually, I'm glad you brought that up. So comparing the comic version of Peter Parker's death transitioning into Miles Morales and what this movie did, what difference would you be most excited to see live action? So, Dimitri, feel free to interrupt me, but okay, Peter Parker dying before Miles even meets him. That's a big one for me because I think the evolution of the character is drastically different because of that. And then when he does meet him, it's a different universe one, and it's much later. I've probably said this many, many times, but getting the power, not wanting the power, and then seeing the guy who has the power and does all this good stuff with it, die on the television while you're in school, like just like on the TV, 
and like, I'm oh right. crap, now I have to we're right. have this great response. We're all right. Yeah. We're all right. It's going to be Andrew Garfield. He's going to die, and Miles is going to meet Tom Holland, Spider Man. And he's the one from another universe, and being another he's universe. already had some portals and stuff. Yeah. So again, back to this live action. Yes, you're right. I think that's a huge difference in how they grow. Your next point. Next point. Venom kills Miles' mother. And, and he's a monster. Yeah. Oh. Like a lab induced, uncontrollable monster that, that we need to host. Something like I almost would like to see, like for almost no reason, but like that's just such a crazy thing venom of another universe being that but we could see that especially now that they're combining the venom verse into this it's possible but it's just a very different vibe like you're talking like almost like the thing movie just this uncontrollable lusting that just wants to kill i forget how like, that version of venom even like goes away like it wasn't like he defeated venom no because then secret wars happened and the universe is mashed together and yeah. then he got his mother back. So it so wasn't really this Venom. The one that kills his mom completely is made in a lab. Venom, though. It's like a yeah. variant of Venom. Not Which from space at all. Could still be a thing. Yeah, no, Venom definitely. Venomverse is still a thing. I'm not saying Venom himself, but Venom does want to kill Peter Parker. There is that. He's saying how tasty he is. He's starting to lose his shit. Right. I think there's a an issue of Miles, like in that first run, I want to say it's number 11 or so. They show the lab person who creates that specific Venom symbiote. There's backstory there, too. Oh, yeah, you're right. That they can right. put into, you know, insert somewhere to yeah. make that happen. It all depends on if Sony's taking everything Sony owns and saying it's one world. If they yeah. do that, then... I mean, of course, all of this wasn't planned. So there's going to be some things that we're going to be like, oh, but this kind of messes that up. Just like you know, the three, four possibilities now where Miles could end up live action. Something's going to overlap and be like, well, if that's real, that kind of makes that not so cool, but it's cool on its own. You know, like there's going to be a few things like that, but there's so many possibilities now. It's just a matter of the live action's confirmed. How are they going to do it? That's all it is at this point. Like, how are they going to connect it? Are they going to connect it? And how comic accurate are they going to stick? Which, of course, would make a first appearance of Miles Morales, especially the one in 25 variant, very, very valuable. So if oh, you go to man. Heritage Auctions um, so and shameless. search for the 9.8 signed by Mark Bagley, Bendis, you know, Clayton just, Crane, got some sketches on it. And you want to put in your bid. It's got 22 more days. Heritage Auction. I'll actually put the auction number in the description of this video. So you just go check it out and give it a follow. Share with all your friends. And if they have money, share it with them twice. <laughs> what a shameless uh, plug. I want to make note of something. You see Rhino a lot in this. We saw a Rhino that was just a normal Rhino. Like they mentioned Rhino a lot. The next movie that's coming from the Sony-verse is Craven. You're right. Who we have confirmed a Rhino and how he goes through a transformation. Well, Interesting. Yep. Could be related. I also think that Craven is going to end with his next hunt being Venom. Maybe he's looking to it's buy a new time. weapon. That could be. And Prowler stole some. I think oh, yeah. lots of possibilities with that. Because I want like a big thing for Prowler. Like I want him to have done something so horrendous. Like how crazy would it be that he's the reason why like his mother dies in like a live action universe? Because he stole like a Venom, you know what I mean? Or something like that. There's a lot of possibilities they got right now. And this movie just opened up the door for all of it, honestly. So we're going to do a few quick Easter eggs. Feel free to chime in or look at me awkwardly, whichever he's you prefer. All right. So the second Ugh. Spider-Woman, known as Julia Carpenter, was shown quickly in the headquarters, right? That's also coming. Julia Carpenter is the Spider-Woman that Sydney Sweeney will be playing. They're also doing Jessica Drew. They're doing, what's the other girl called? Mm -hmm. Anya Cortez. Anya. Anya Cortez. Oh, yeah. So I just thought it was cool to see that costume. Like, I wanted to point out the Easter egg because it's like possible to see that exact costume in live action sooner than that later. That could have been her. Where was Silk? Silk my guess what the fuck <laughs> is not going to be used for a bit because i think they're going to save her for something special she basically got bit by the same spider only she got like put away somewhere kind of like a project superman kind of situation mm -hmm. and then when like she was freed she really like was attracted to other spider powered people and she has a lot of intercourse with peter parker and oh, he I... just like allows it like doesn't even realize like she's like love drunk on pheromone spider sense which is kind of questionable dance lot but yes get your silk first appearances they are pricey but i do think there's still value in them for the fact that they're holding out for a reason i think we're gonna get something sufficient with her are we getting a show or are we getting a movie yeah, all of those rumors are trash now no one knows Really? There's just no new rumors. It's dead in the water as far as everyone is concerned. But something oh, is going to come up for 100%. I think so. Gwen's bedroom 
had a band poster that was called Ultimate Fallout, which, That's as many cool. of you know, is the first appearance of Spider-Man Miles Morales, which, if you want a copy, the rarest copy you could get, oh, uh, one of a <laughs> Heritage Auction House, take a look. You'll find it. You'll know when you see it. Next, this one I got off of HollywoodReporter.com. The Sony Pictures Animation logo briefly glitches, and it glitches to a font that is comparable to Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars number eight. I think this is notable for the one fact that if this is true, that they chose this font for a specific reason, it is just trying to tell you Secret Wars is coming. Also, the Secret Wars where Miles' universe merges into 616, where he gets his mother back, where he gets to, you know, swing around the same city as Peter Parker. Where do we see that font? The Sony logo in the beginning of the movie. Well, again, coincidence it's just an interesting fact and of course the rumored part two title which i'm pretty sure is confirmed is beyond the spider-verse yes which again brings in all the theories you've been talking about of is this miles going to cross over to live action or something else or is it going to be a merging of such or we're we just going to get a ton of spin-offs after this is the word beyond just mean origin stories from everyone and just a ton of spin-offs possibly even silk it's almost like his universe which is probably going to like break anyway from mm -hmm. a potential, I guess what you call it, incursion, right? Incursion, yes. His universe, which is already dwindling away, loses a Spider-Man. Their Peter Parker's already dead. And that's it. That's how they do that. At the end of the day, they're going to do what makes them the most money. But you want them to kill Peter Parker, I know. Will they do it? Probably not. But we all have our hopes and dreams. No oh point. Which in some case are to have the new highest valued miles morales first appearance comic ever to be sold so if you go over to heritage really auction in the description of this video is the auction number please make your bids now we have 20 days to go panelers podcast Yeah, guys, spoiler warning for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse happening in 3, 2, 1. You've been warned. I needed that before, not now, but I'll take it because that was the best one. <laughs> I didn't think you could do better, but you did. <laughs> Palmer's podcast. Yeah. That would be the first time we've ever seen. We've ever seen. You just freeze? If he didn't freeze. That's this crazy. Is the best frozen right? he's ever done. What the fuck? That was good. That was, that was unnaturally good, right? frozen. That, that was good. That scared me. That's good. Paler's podcast. Pierre is at the point where the attention <laughs> has dwindled. I'm just taking the shoes off. I'm just taking okay. the shoes off. He's scratching his leg. Paler's podcast. Isn't she in Japan? No, no, not even. No, I have to cut that.